you are watching News Talk with the International News Channel at TAC TV. I'm Tahir Gora. Israel-Palestine conflict hits Canadian Jewish community and businesses all across Canada. According to the Anti-Defamation League Center for Extremism, preliminary data, more than 17,000 tweets using variations of the phrase quote, Hitler was right, unquote, went up between May 7 and May 14. The ADL's analysis of Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram found explicit praise for Hitler. According to a recent report by UJA Federation of Greater Toronto, there have been more than 50 anti-Semitic incidences reported around the GTA in May, a five-fold increase compared to the previous few months. In a statement released on May 16, Bane Breath, Canada said the number of anti-Semitic assaults recorded so far in May of 2021 easily surpasses the total for all of 2020. I'm joined with Banai Brits Canada CEO, Michael Mostyn. Welcome, Michael. In Thank a statement you, released on May 16, your organization said the number of anti-Semitic assaults recorded so far in May of 2021 easily surpasses the total for all of 2020. What is the situation as of today? Well, that, that's absolutely right to hear. Um, and we, that's very disturbing, obviously. What we've seen this year, most recently a few weeks ago, we saw the latest confrontation between Hamas, the Hamas terrorist group, and Israel. What we've noted, and B'nai B'rith has been keeping an audit of anti-Semitic incidents in Canada since 1982. Every single time that there's a conflict between Israel and one of the terrorist organizations, uh, we tend to see um, a blowback, a blowback not just in Canada, but in communities around the world, uh, where oftentimes Jews are targeted uh, because they are viewed as Zionists and supporters of the, the state of Israel. What we have, and, and we see a continuing escalation, uh, conflict over conflict, and we see the same thing in May of 2021. This time, when we have seen um, rallies on several cities, streets, um, against COVID restrictions, um, where people are supposed to be staying home, and yet we've seen thousands and sometimes 10,000 individuals um, attending, violating COVID orders, um, and then assaults on uh, those that they believe uh, to be pro-Israel. There's no excuse for violence. Uh, there's, it's just not justified. Canada should be a place where we can all have strong political views about geopolitical situations around the world, but we're supposed to be treating each other with respect, talking about ideas, and never attacking individuals. And I think that's all of us have to call that out, no matter the, the source. Also, we notice on your Twitter handle, as well as in the media very recently, that mock eviction notices being placed on Jewish homes in some cities, some towns, and Jewish families being harassed and called baby killers, quote unquote, that's so bad. How concerned are you at this low level hatred? It's very disturbing um, because Canada is a nation of immigrants. And any house you go to, you don't know what the person's uh, native language is. You don't know how good their English skills are. Uh, if you were to see a one of these so-called mock eviction notices on your door, where you have to actually read to the third paragraph to even understand that this is meant as uh, sarcasm or perhaps as uh, anti-Israel advocacy, uh, it's just wrong. It's it's scaring people uh, at their homes. Um, and uh, and particularly traumatizing for those um, who feel that they are um, uh, actually individually targeted by a campaign like this. Uh, once again, it, it 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 speaks to the low level of the uh, of the dialogue on this on this situation. Um, uh, you know, it's it's not responsible advocacy by any organization. Um, and that's why B'nai B'rith called it out. We just think it's completely irresponsible to be scaring people in their homes. 
So, Michael, one of the many examples of hateful false propaganda we see constantly distributed via social media, reaching millions of people every day. We have seen how these vicious conspiracy theories translate into real world violence hitting Jewish communities across the world, including Canada. How could Canadian society stand with Jewish brothers and sisters against this ongoing hatred? Well, thanks for that question, Tahir. Um, I think that it's important, first of all, when we're calling out anti-Semitism, when we're talking about anti-Semitism as a specific form of hatred here, to call it out regardless of the source. Uh, we know that there's been a rise in white supremacy, neo-Nazism online and in, in the real world. Um, and generally speaking, people don't hesitate to call that out. Nobody supports Nazi ideologies nowadays, or at least they shouldn't be. Uh, but um, when it comes to anti-Semitism coming from other sources, we see sometimes an extreme hesitancy. And most recently with the conflict, we saw anti-Semitism manifesting itself in anti-Israel extremism, uh, which uh, can, of course, sometimes cross the line into the targeting of individual Jews. And so I think it's important that when we see the targeting of individuals, in this case, Jews, no matter where from the extreme right, from the extreme left, from various uh, religious um, sources, it doesn't matter. We need to call it out as it is. So in a series of tweets, your organization wrote, quote, anti-Semitism, especially in its modern guise of anti-Zionism, is not simply an issue of masked extremists who beat Jews and destroy their property. It is also an issue of some of our society's most esteemed institutions. Universities, school boards, political parties, unions, the media ignoring Jew hatred and in so doing providing cover for it, unquote. Would you tell our viewers how dire is the situation in context of your concerns? Yeah, it's, it's very disturbing to hear. Um, the, you know, the unions, the trade unionists, um, academics, um, traditionally, going back decades, you know, these were always uh, institutions and individuals that were viewed as allies of the Jewish community in the struggle against anti-Semitism. And yet today, we find that Jewish students on campus are often most fearful um, of being um, persecuted or having their career prospects dimmed uh, because of um, unrestrained and unhinged um, anti-Zionist and anti-Israel extremism that is emanating and often goes uh, unpunished. Jewish students, sometimes Jewish faculty, um, and, and even in the high schools we see this as well. A, a one-sided uh, attack on the state of Israel, a denial of, of the rights of Jews to have a, a homeland just as, as any group uh, of individuals uh, should have around the world, but, but the picking and targeting on one, on the values of Zionism, which is something that um, the vast majority of Jews are brought up uh, to be proud in, and it's an important part of who they are, and actually it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. But um, there's been vilification, and, um, and it's, it's sad, but it's, it's a sign of the times, and uh, it's something that our community is beginning to push back against. So do you see, on the other hand, any willingness among universities, school boards, political parties, unions, the media to not ignore Jew hatred? If not, how could situation be handled? It, again, it's a great question. In the media, it's very difficult because nowadays, I think the media, you know, whereas it used to be straight news, it seems to be a lot of opinion. And we know that different media have different bents. And this simply does not fit the narrative that comes from certain media. So we just know that stories like this, uh, especially anti-Semitism that comes from the extreme left uh, or from the uh, extremist anti-Israel movement, it's just not going to see uh, any print or the light of day. How do we get around that? Well, there's social media today. So individuals have their own platforms uh, to push back and fight back. Although, again, there's this, there's issues with algorithms from all of these high-tech companies nowadays uh, that 
uh, prejudge what we can see and cannot see on our social media feeds. So, um, you know, this is going to require uh, legislative uh, recourse uh, in dealing with these tech companies, make sure that ensuring that uh, the algorithms are fair and that uh, individuals can get their message out and not see just what, um, uh, you know, it, it might be more um, uh, commercially viable uh, for, for the tech giants for us to see. Um, but to push back and again, uh, call it out and, and ask for all of our leaders uh, in all fields of, of life in Canada to, uh, to push back against anti-Semitism, which is just a, a, you know, a unique form of, of hatred. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees admitted that there is no shortage of food, water and medicine in Gaza. They also quoted that Israel's rockets were precise and avoided casualties. Although they sort of uh, denied as well, uh, on the other hand, but why can't Canadian media, political parties, civil liberty groups and academia at large admit those facts? Well, I think to hear everybody likes to cheer for the underdog. And the Palestinian cause today is widely viewed as the underdog. Um, UNRWA is a United Nations organization set up to help refugees. That's in and of itself, you know, should be a great, wonderful thing, except just the other day, just yesterday, um, um, it was seen that there was a Hamas attack tunnel buried right underneath a United Nations UNRWA school in Gaza. How could that school, how could leadership at UNRWA be unaware that there was an attack tunnel where terrorists, you know, would be flowing back and forth, uh, seeking to cause innocent civilians, um, you know, underneath that UNRWA infrastructure. Um, UNRWA has been, unfortunately, uh, helping to finance um, uh, hate within their educational materials for years. So pushing more towards violence and a continuation of violence rather than pushing towards peace. Um, you know, at the end of the day, there was a lot of talk of disproportionality in this last conflict because, of course, Israel is a, uh, a stronger now regional military power at this at this point. But the disproportionality actually was in terms of the loss of innocent civilian life. There were every single one of the casualties in Israel was an innocent civilian, you know, caused from you know rockets that were indiscriminately fired by the Hamas terrorist group uh, into Israel. When you look at the casualties uh, on the Palestinian side, and of course every uh, casualty is uh, innocent casualty is is an absolute tragedy. The vast majority of them were Hamas terrorists with hit with pinpoint accuracy, and in fact probably you know five, ten, twenty percent, whatever it is, was actually misfired rockets launched by Hamas themselves, which killed their own people. Uh, inside of Gaza. So there was a tremendous amount of disproportionality, but not the kind of disproportionality that we get sometimes from left wing or anti Israel media, um, but a, a, a disproportionality of, um, um, you know, of innocence uh, on the Israeli side. That's just something that is is not mentioned. So how would you respond to NDP and Green Party's controversial remarks over the situation and how their remarks could fuel any sort of anti-Semitism in Canada? I think there needs to be a demand from all Canadians for all political parties that, you know, of course, there's going to be different ideological bents, but you have to stick to the truth and to the facts. And uh, it's just not responsible and not acceptable uh, to base, um, you know, what what parties may or may not want to do uh, to to attract new voting members into their base, it, it can't be done uh, separated from the facts and um, you, you know and 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 pushing ideas such as um, uh, you know uh, trying to to boycott uh, is, Israeli military arm sales at a time when when it's it's doing what every state should be doing, is obligated to do, to defend its citizens against uh, t uh, indiscriminate rocket fire by, by a terrorist organization, it sends the wrong message. 
And the message that it sends to those that see and hear and are primed for that message is that um, you know there's a there's a problem there's a particular problem with this Jewish state and oftentimes what we've seen translated and we have seen this translate in the month of May there's a problems with some of my fellow citizens who are of the Jewish faith and we've seen some of these violent attacks again it's based on this anti-Israel extremism uh, that is not connected to uh, to reality and um, we need to temper down um, tensions. When, 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 when there's conflict, there's always emotions, strong emotions on both sides. It's irresponsible political parties uh, to, to fuel those emotions for their own political gain, especially when individuals get hurt. So to what extent uh, uh, you and your organization satisfied uh, with the conservative and liberal parties of Canada's handling of rising anti-Semitism in Canada? Well, you know, there's a lot of reasons for hope, and there's a lot of reasons that that people are getting um, uh, depressed in their in their outlook. Um, there's been a movement within the federal government to address the issues of online hate. Um, it's being recognized the problems. Now the question is, how do we deal with it? Uh, how do we deal with it, both with the tech company side um, and with individuals using the cover of anonymity to target uh, their fellow citizens for hate? Um, we've been pushing for a long time for a national action plan to combat anti-Semitism, a long-term, well-thought-out plan that gets different governments working with each other, working with police departments um, to push this. So, um, you know, Unfortunately, I've been contacted, B'nai B'rith has been contacted in recent times. People are actually nervous because they haven't, we haven't seen this level of, of hate, sustained hate targeting the Jewish community uh, in Canada in this generation. And, um, and people are, are concerned that if we do not deal with it, if we do not ensure that there is not further escalation, is this a country that's going to be continuously friendly and safe for their children and grandchildren? That's something that um, you know that we want to work hard to ensure and work with with uh, our elected officials to ensure. So Toronto Mayor John Tory has spoken on rising anti-Semitism uh, in Toronto precisely. How satisfied are you with law enforcement situation in Toronto? Well, uh, again, a, a great question to hear. Um, in terms of uh, Toronto uh, and and across Canada, there's been different responses uh, to uh, to these illegal um, um, protests that that were taking place. Um, I thought the city of Halifax did a great job when they got an, a junction uh, to prevent this rally, uh, a super spreader event, from taking place. Um, because when you deal with something in advance, when you know that it's going to be violating the law. You, you shut it down. It's sometimes not just about freedom of speech. In Canada, we also have a freedom from hate, a freedom uh, not to uh, be uh, targeted with hate. And that has to be balanced along with everything else and including the fact that uh, police are limited and, and, um, and we can't have their resources overwhelmed, which is something that we saw uh, in Toronto, unfortunately, was police were overwhelmed and that's when some of these individuals got hurt. Um, at these illegal rallies. So um, there's always more that can be done. The statement from the mayor was terrific. It was a great a message of solidarity. And in fact, I wish that other mayors in other cities in Canada um, would follow uh, Mayor Tory and his strong statement because there's many mayors that still have not spoken up about anti-Semitism in their cities. So has Toronto police increased patrolling in Jewish neighborhood at your satisfactory level? in the face of recent hike of anti-Semitism? They have, um, and, and police have been very good about communicating with Jewish community leadership in terms of increasing those patrols and allowing you know, the, the Jewish community to feel safe in their neighborhoods. Um, it's unfortunate, though, of, again, that, that there were individuals driving around in cars and actually targeting Jewish individuals in Jewish neighborhoods um, you know, sometimes going straight up to people's doors and asking where the Jews live. Um, this is a very uh, trauma-inducing, um, trauma-inducing behavior. But 
Um, more can always be done. And something that B'nai B'rith has been pushing for is um, not always dealing with things after the fact, but before the fact. And when we know that there's going to be, in this case, still we're in the time of COVID, illegal rallies, and and everybody is making sacrifices, staying home, uh, not inviting others over to barbecues, not visiting our loved ones in, in long-term nursing cares. There's no excuse to allow people onto the streets to promote hate and to preach hate and to have, um, you know, in the case of these extremist anti-Israel rallies, um, the showing of swastika flags, praise for Adolf Hitler, because of course, um, you know, Adolf Hitler is known very well for just one thing, and that is the attempted genocide of the Jewish people. It has nothing to do with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So lastly, our viewers would like to know, what do you expect from Canadian Muslim organizations and uh, parliamentarians of uh, Muslim origin in a fight against anti-Semitism during these very trying and challenging times for uh, Jews' diaspora? What, we, what we'd love to see is just absolute solidarity. Um, the Jewish community is always there. Anytime a Muslim is ever targeted in this country, uh, I can tell you B'nai B'rith and other Jewish organizations, uh, we're always there to show our solidarity, to say this is not acceptable. Uh, the Jewish community stands with uh, the, the Muslim community against hate. Uh, and, and we want to see this, uh, of course, uh, uh, boomerang back at our community. Um, it, it has been rather uh, quiet, I have to tell you, to hear, unfortunately, uh, although there are some strong voices that have been standing with our community at this very trying time. Ju Jewish Heritage Month is the month of May, and unfortunately, this is when all of this targeting was taking place. But I can tell you, there are many in the community asking, where are our friends, where are our neighbors, when our community is under threat? Thank you, Michael, for joining me today. I really appreciate for your participation. Thank you, Tahir. It's always a pleasure. You are watching News Talk with Tahir Gorai, International News Channel at TAC TV.